video. Today we wanted to put together a little video about the gear that we have been wearing when we've been going on our winter paddleboarding trips. So we're going to talk about different options, more expensive, more efficient options and more budget, uh, but still okay things, things to wear. And we're going to start with men. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I do a lot of kayaking, um, so obviously it's uh, quite transferable with the clothing you'd wear as it's both paddle sports you're outdoors and you need to keep warm and through the years I've kind of learned what works best and it is the most expensive option but I find a dry suit is 100% going to keep you dry and warm all year round um, and if you don't know what a dry suit is it's kind of like a boiler suit that you get into and it's gasketed at the neck and the sleeves and then you've got socks sort of sewn in so you're completely sealed off when you're inside it this one you enter through the back got a big waterproof zip here so you step into it seal yourself in it's also got flies so if you need to get to the toilet you can unzip your flies a very important aspect of this for safety is to make sure you do your zip up tight because if you fall in the water and this fills with water it can be pretty damn dangerous we can end up drowning so always make sure your zips done up that's a really important thing to remember when you've got a dry suit so with the dry suit obviously because it's just a, a boiler suit you need to keep dry uh, and you need to keep warm and dry underneath so I think the best option is a nice big thermal onesie this is a proper bespoke one from a company called Nookie who are a UK based company um, 50 quid this you get into this first so you're warm and then step into your dry suit seal yourself up you should stay completely warm and dry with this on the inside um, a budget option of this is just to go to somewhere like Primark and get yourself a very basic fleece onesie. I mean, they are kind of the same sort of thing. And you probably save yourself 30 quid or something. As for dry suits, that one was about 500 quid from a company called Immersion Research. But they range anywhere from maybe 350 odd quid to right up to over a thousand pounds. But it depends on the quality and uh, what you want from it really. Um, but I went for sort of 500 pound from sort of mid-range, fairly decent dry suit. So then moving on to footwear. So you've got your, your rubber socks on this. Sometimes they come with uh, socks that are made out of um, the material of the suit. Um, over those, you're gonna get very cold because a lot of the ground and the board in the winter is freezing cold and it travels straight up through anything in your foot into your, your, bare, your bare foot through your shoes. So I find I actually layer up a lot and I put uh, neoprene socks on uh, over the top of those and then those into boots so you want to size up your boots and i've got these sort of uh nrs heavy duty sort of uh white water kayak boots that i wear in the winter um, as an alternative i've got these adidas boat shoes which have got holes in the bottom so when they fill up water they just sort of drain straight through um, they work as well but i feel like boots are like the warmest best option if you really want to go 100 percent warm and uh, suited up, uh, I'd wear those. And then the only lo last thing to think of is your hands, which can get very cold. Um, I usually think it's best to go with some kind of neoprene glove because it's tight fitting, you've still got good contact with your paddle. Um, these are actually mountain bike uh, neoprene gloves. Um, same sort of thing, you're gonna get wet and dirty on a mountain bike, so they work well on a, on a paddle board as well. Um, so yeah, that's my my setup for a sort of high-end, um, expensive setup for paddling all year round. I have to say that it's been very useful. Like when we go on a trip and for some reason there is a tree all over the place and we need to take the boards out of the river and there is no actually easy access. It's been very handy that then can just get into the river and pull us out and not get wet at all. So I think yeah. it is, if you are going to be paddling all year round and you have a little bit of money to spare, I, I that would be my, I think I am buying one <laughs> at some point soon. So and yeah, another, it's a good investment. Another option actually with dry suits is that they do last a long time and you can, can go to companies to get them resealed. So you can pay about 30, 40 quid, send them off to whoever the manufacturer is and they'll put new rubbers in them. So you could look onto one of the Facebook sale groups or eBay and try and pick up a budget sort of 300 pound, 200 pound one that would have been five, 600 quid. Pay a bit of money, get it 
kitted out and you for about 300 quid you've got yourself a fairly decent dry suit yeah for a sort of mid-range option i haven't got much to show you here but i was thinking for kayaking this is what i'd wear and as i said it will transfer well to paddleboarding cags so this is a short cag which is more what i'd wear for whitewater kayaking in the spring or summer um, but the idea is again a bit like the dry suit is it keeps you as dry as possible so it's sort of sealed around the neck sealed around the arms and sealed around the midriff so you'd wear this as a two-parter so you'd wear this as your top half and then you'd get a similar thing but in trousers so the trousers would have a gasket around your ankle and a gasket around your midriff so if you go in you're probably going to get wet if you're completely submerged but getting splashed or spray on you or like it rains you're going to stay pretty dry and warm same thing as with the dry suit you wear a base layer underneath so something nice and warm you could always use a hiking sort of uh, thermal or something to wear underneath um, just to keep you nice and warm on the base and then this is the top layer uh, so that's quite a straightforward option as a sort of mid-range thing and this will be like um, 150 pounds for the top and 150 pounds for the bottom so together it's around 300 pounds without uh, including the gloves and the socks and the shoes like like before so you are saving around 200 pounds it's more a mid-range uh, yeah. option Okay, and finally, uh, the budget option. So I only started to do paddle boarding quite recently. So I wasn't ready the first winter to spend 500 pounds on, on a dry suit. So I thought, well, what were my options? And, and this is what I decided, and it's worked out quite well. It's a bit more complicated, it has more parts, but I will go through them. So, um, I have these socks which are from Decathlon which are th three millimeters of thickness which work very very well keep my feet warm that is what I have found is the most uh, for me is the, the what I get cold where I get colder my feet so socks super important and then I get uh, neoprene trousers those socks from Decathlon they were like around 15 pound if I remember well these trousers were around £25 and this top was £10 so it's neoprene so it's a bit warmer than normal clothing if it gets splashed it still uh, keeps you warm it doesn't matter too much and it's very tight so you have a lot of mobility but uh, comfort as well and then on top of that if it was a very cold day I will put a fleece this is any old fleece that you have at home is good enough like it doesn't have to be something special and my waterproof trousers so waterproof trousers on top of the neoprene means like if I get a splash by the water or if it's raining I am not going to get my neoprene wet so I am not going to get um, cold top of that I put my rain jacket which I'm wearing at the moment and then of course some lovely gloves these are from Amazon TWF they were only £10 and I have found out that they are actually quite good they are 3 millimeters of neoprene as well very warm and some shoes these are from um, Sport Direct all very budget <laughs> all budget subs these were around £10 as well if you're going to get uh, some shoes just think if you're going to be wearing them on top of your socks you need to get them in size or a size and a half bigger because the socks are quite thick and you want to have a bit of mobility on your feet when you are on the board and then just my hat and my scarf which I always wear because I get cold but with all of this I managed to stay dry I managed to stay warm and I managed to actually have a good time even if it was raining if it was hailing and all together well I I'm not including obviously my all the neoprene stuff not including the fleece or the waterproof trousers or the rain jacket because these are items that I already had before all the neoprene stuff was around 73 pound so it's under quite under a hundred pound which is a massive difference from from the first option um, so if you are trying it, if you are feeling, oh, I'm going to give it a go to paddleboarding in winter, I'm not sure I'm going to like it. 
I think this, this will be a reasonable first step. Also because it means you can use the items different times of the year. So if I am paddling in spring and it's a little bit of a cold this day, I will just put my waterproof, uh, my neoprene trousers and I won't put my waterproofs on top. I still can use it. Summer, the same thing. So um, yeah, it worked for me mm. quite well. So I do recommend it. Another option that will be the most budget option if you don't have the 70 pounds to spend on on neoprene gear it will be just get your waterproofs get warm underneath and just put your waterproofs on top one thing i will say that is a must have that even if you are not going to spend uh, some money on trousers and shirt is do buy socks shoes and gloves because your feet and your hand are going to get cold are going to get wet and they are going to get cold and if you want to have a good experience you need to do your best to keep them warm cool. if you are going with any of these setups if you are not going with a boiler suit with a dry suit you definitely have to take a change of clothes so we normally take our our waterproof bag and in it and inside we just take a towel and some dry clothes just because Hopefully you won't fall, but if you fall, you need to get out of the water and get dry and warm as soon as you can. Um, so yeah, definitely important to get a change of clothes. If you are wearing the boiler suit, you don't need them. Mm. But if you are going for the budget option, you definitely need them. Okay, so that sort of summarizes various different options to suit some different budgets for paddling all year round. I mean, it's really great if you can get out there on a nice sunny winter's day, or even if it's raining, like if you've got the right gear, it makes all the difference and you can just carry on doing it all year round. There's no bad weather, there's bad gear. Yeah, that's <laughs> very true. Um, so yeah, like we, what we'll do is, I think it's probably a good idea if we, we list some things that we found that we think are really good options, we'll put in the description, we'll put some links to them so you can sort of uh, be easily led to Amazon or Decathlon or shop to buy <laughs> buy uh, dry suits but yeah we'll put some links in the description and any questions as well pop them in the in the comments and we'll try and answer them as best we can yeah please if you if you think we miss out anything just let us know we really hope you find this useful um and we're looking to hear from you yeah happy okay. paddling yeah bye <laughs>